Give him glory, give him praise. Give him glory, give him praise. Give him glory, give him praise. Appreciate him from the depth of your heart. Let your voice of thanksgiving be registered on high this morning. Remember, as you are thanking him for what he has done, you are positioning him for what he will yet do. Give him the glory. These are the doings of the Lord. They are marvelous in our eyes. Also begin to thank him for the answers he has given to your prayer this morning, knowing that he has not, you have not prayed in vain, but that God has heard you and that he's answering all of your petitions. Give him praise. Give him glory. Give him praise. Give him glory. Give him praise and give him glory. Now begin to ask him to speak to you this morning. Lord, I'm here to hear from you today. Speak to me by your word. I'm here for an encounter with you. Transform me by your word. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' precious name we have prayed. Our Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. We thank you for the blessing of being in your presence. We thank you, Lord, for all of the testimonies we have heard. They are your doings and they are marvelous in our eyes. And for it, we give you all the glory. For the answers to our prayer, we say thank you. And now, Lord, our eyes are upon you this morning. We ask that you will speak to us. By your word, let every one of us be changed and transformed. We give you all the praise and all the glory. In Jesus' precious name we have prayed. Somebody believe, say loud, amen. amen. Give Jesus a big hand and please, you may be seated in his presence. It is my year of breaking limits. We have been looking at this line of exhortations all through the week entitled Wonders of Partnership with God. We have come to establish in the course of the week all through this season that our engagement in advancing the kingdom of God, whether in prayer or in soul winning, commits God to establish partnership with us. Jesus said in Mark, Mark chapter 16 and verse 15, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. And as a result of that, they went everywhere in verse 20 preaching, the Lord also walking with them, confirming the word with signs following. In Matthew 28 verse 19 and verse 20, he said the same thing. And he said, as you are doing so, behold, I am with you always, even to the end of the world. So clearly from scriptures, we are made to understand that our engagement in the advancement of God's kingdom establishes a partnership between us and God. And partnership with God turns a man to a living wonder. It produces unusual results in the life of an individual. And what we've tried to examine all through this week are the effects of that partnership with God. And this morning, we are going to look at this very important fact that partnership with God enthrones believers. Partnership with God enthrones believers. Every time you find a man that is in partnership with God, he cannot end up on the ground. He must end up on a throne. In Luke chapter 22, Jesus painted a very clear picture to us from verse 25 to 27. And then we'll see the after effect from verse 28 to 30. He said, the kings of the Gentiles exercise lordship over them and they, and they that they exercise authority are called benefactors. He said, but ye shall not be so. But he that is the greatest among you shall be as the younger. And he that is chief as him that doth serve. He says, I am, he said, which is greater than the one that seated at me or he that serveth? I am among you as he that serveth. Jesus was showing us the pattern for greatness in the kingdom. He said, which one seems greater in the physical? Is it not the one that is sitting? He said, but I have come among you as he that serves. The pathway to greatness and enthronement in the kingdom is the pathway of stewardship. Now look at what it says in verse 28. Here are they which have continued with me on all my temptations. 
he says and i appoint unto you a kingdom as my father has appointed me you will judge the 12 tribes of israel and you will sit on thrones when you commit yourself to stewardship the outcome of your engagement is enthronement that is why there is no one that actually commits themselves to serving god that can end on the floor you must end on a throne the Bible makes it very clear to us. And the testimony we heard this morning is very instructive. An individual for 13 months, no income, feeding becoming a critical issue, getting to the point where children are withdrawn from school, life becoming unbearable, but then begins to engage from the floor. And from the floor, ended on the throne. If you listen to the statements that were made by the owner of that organization, it is the exact statement that was made by Pharaoh to Joseph. Only in position will I be greater than you. Everything you are going to do from staffing, whatever concerns this organization, it is you that it falls to. Gave a befitting, befitting accommodation when he was about to be thrown out of the one where he was. God just dramatically changing his story. Remember Joseph started from the prison, but he was given a place in the palace. The same exact experience and all tied to engagement. There is no one that genuinely is engaging in serving God that ends on the floor. It must end on a throne. In Proverbs 11 and verse 30, the Bible says there to us, He that winneth souls is wise. And in Proverbs chapter 8, verse 15 and verse 16, the effect of wisdom is always enthronement. It said, because by me kings reign and princes decree justice. So the after effect of our engagement in the pursuit of the laws will always be enthronement because the wisdom that comes through soul winning is the wisdom that positions for reigning remember according to scripture every child of god is ordained to reign on the earth the bible makes it very clear to us in revelations 5 and verse 10 he said that he has made us unto our god kings and priests and we shall reign on the earth. But what gives you your throne from where you reign is your engagement in advancing the kingdom. Now let's take note of these very important things. First, that God bestows honor on everyone serving him in truth and in deed. The honor of enthronement is the response of God to our stewardship towards him in truth and in deed in john chapter 12 verse 23 to 26 jesus speaking he said there he said that the hour for the son of man to be glorified is come but except a corn of wheat fall to the ground and die it abideth alone but if it dies it will bring forth much fruit it then goes on to say he that loveth his life will lose it but he that hated his life in this world shall keep it unto life eternal. Now look at verse 26 very closely. It says, if any man serve me, let him follow me. And where I am, there also shall my servant be. If any man serve me, him will my father honor. Now somebody may say, well, all he's talking there, talking about there is honor. Take note of what he said there. He said very closely, he said, if any man serve me, let him follow me. Follow me, meaning what? Matthew 4, 19, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. Let him follow me. Let him follow me in pursuit of the lost. And what will happen to him when he does that? He said, where I am, there shall my servant be also. Where is he now? He's seated on the throne on high. So anyone that actually follows him, serving him, cannot but end up with the honor of enthronement. So the honor there is tied to the enthronement. There is no one that is sitting on a throne that lacks honor. In the same vein, anyone who is seated, who is in pursuit, sorry, of the lost, following Christ, as a result of that, that individual enjoys the honor of enthronement. That will be somebody's testimony here. In Proverbs chapter 14 and verse 28, the Bible makes it clear to us. Proverbs 14, 28. It said, in the multitude of the people is the king's honor, 
but in the want of the people is the destruction of the prince so god is honored every time the multitudes are gathered unto him and it says in first samuel 2 verse 30 he that honors me i will honor the moment you honor god by being part of gathering the multitudes to him you cannot lack the honor of god and please hear this there is no honor that compares to the honor that comes from god there are people who are running around the earth today seeking for the honor of men but when god honors a man no man can dishonor him the honor of god is not erasable by the hatred of man that's why you discover that when a man is honored by god even those who hate who hate him honor him by force that is the power of divine honor it says in john 5 44 he said yeah they which seek honor one from another but you seek not the honor that cometh from god only there is a dimension of honor that only god can bestow and god is no respecter of persons a man can honor you because he likes you but god only honors you because you serve him it is our service to god that secures the honor of god i see the honor of god coming upon us in this prophetic season as we serve him in the name of jesus somebody believe it say a loud amen furthermore we discover that every soul winner is recognized as an ambassador of christ which entitles such individuals to ambassadorial immunity according to scripture in the book of second corinthians 5 verse 17 to 20 we are told if any man is in christ is a new creature that new creature now is ordained by god to have this ministry of reconciliation is given the word of reconciliation and when he begins to engage in it is referred to as an ambassador of christ an ambassador has immunity to the occurrences that take place in whatever community they stay in they are immune they are protected they are defended now look at zechariah chapter 2 verse 4 verse 5 and verse 8 and you will see what this means he said ron speak to this young man saying jerusalem shall be inhabited as towns without walls for the multitude of men and of cattle therein he said for i the lord will be a wall of fire round about her and i will be the glory in the midst of her now look at verse 8 very closely it says for thus said the lord after the glory hath he sent me unto the nations which spoiled you for he that touched you touched the apple of his eye the moment you are part of the in gathering you are part of the harvesting you become the apple of the eye you see a person may permit you to touch their hand but no one will be looking at you touching his eye god says you are the apple of my eye anyone that is seeking to touch you is not just touching my finger you see many of us understand that according to scriptures you and i are part of the body of christ but god is saying that in your stewardship you are particularly the eye anyone that wants to touch you is trying to touch the eye you will not look at anybody trying to touch your eye you will slap the hand out god is saying i cannot watch anyone touch you when you are committed to serving me that's why you are secure you are immune to the occurrences around you you see that is the effect of our commitment to serving god i pray that for each one of us as grace comes upon our lives not only will we serve him but we will become untouchable by the enemy somebody believe it say loud amen I said somebody believe me say loud amen and if there is anything that we need in our day and age today we need that defense of heaven we live in a wicked world a world that is full of satanic atrocities but god has provided heavenly defenses for those that are committed to serving him my prayer for each one of us is that from this day we'll be counted among those that are serving and defended by god somebody believe me say loud amen i say believe me say loud amen so what it leaves you and i with is a responsibility to make a choice to make a choice the choice of serving god god servant our father said over and again serving god is not a gift serving god is a choice it is a choice but it is the choice of the wise therefore we must make a choice this day is an opportunity given to you and to me tomorrow sunday is an opportunity given to you and to me and that means that if you are truly committed to serving god then you won't come to that service alone 
you will ensure that one is dragged with you. Why? Anyone part of bringing souls is a partaker of his honor. And that honor, among other things, gives you the defense of God where evil is unable to touch you. All that is required is a choice. When the choice is made, the outcome is sure. I see each one of us today being part of those dignified servants of God in the name of Jesus Christ. Will you rise your feet with me this morning and take grace from God. Lord, I receive grace from you today to serve you effectively, to serve you fruitfully, to serve you productively. Lift your voice and pray that prayer from the depth of your heart. Pray that prayer from the depth of your heart. Pray that prayer from the depth of your heart. I receive grace this morning. 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 Grace to serve you effectively, wholeheartedly. I take it today. 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 I receive that grace this morning. I receive that grace this morning. Let it be made available to me in the name of Jesus. I receive that grace this morning. 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 Let it be made manifest. Let it be made manifest. Let it be made manifest in the name of Jesus. Let it be made manifest in the name of Jesus. Let that grace be made manifest in the name of Jesus Christ. Let it be made manifest in the name of of Jesus Christ lift your hand and lift your voice and receive it now receive it now receive it now pray in the spirit pray your understanding and take delivery of the grace of heaven Lord I've made my decision but I take your grace to be effective to be productive in the name of Jesus Christ thank you mighty God in Jesus precious name we have prayed somebody believe say loud amen I remember the testimony of one of us who said, believing God for the fruit of the womb, but during prophetic engagement, she said, I will just go out, share a few flyers, and come back. Not one soul presented to God, and nothing happened. Participation does not determine that you are in partnership. She decided at a point, I will engage vigorously, and then began to bring souls to God. Her testimony landed. It's not just about participating. I collect flyers, I go. No, God is marking you based on, based on what you bring. Not just what you, not just that you go, but that you bring. He said, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. So it is not just going, but it is about bringing. That is the task that each one of us has. Don't let the day just pass you by. Don't arrive in that service just testifying that I went. Make sure that you bring. When you bring and God sees, he marks you and God pays. And the payment of God comes in ways that no man can pay. Man can pay you materially, but God pays you among other things with honor. He pays you with it an entrustment that no man can give you. I see that becoming somebody's experience. So position yourself not just to go, but Lord, I must bring. Lord, I must bring. When your heart is panting like that, you will not miss out in this move. I see that becoming somebody's experience in the name of Jesus Christ. The flowers and tracks are available. Let's stretch our hands again and ask the breath of the Holy Ghost to rest upon them. Every flyer, every track, breathe upon them, Lord. Let the words carry life. Let the images carry life. Let the testimonies carry life. As they reach the hands of individuals, let everyone respond to them speedily in the name of Jesus. None of these shall be wasted. Everyone with whom they arrive, it will speak life unto them. It will gather individuals, gather families, even gather communities unto Christ in the name of Jesus. Everyone that it reaches, they are gathered into your presence in Jesus precious name we have prayed father we decree and declare that every one of the flyers that are going out today we declare that they are blessed your breath shall rest upon them let them be sharp sickles of harvest sickles that will not miss their target in the name of jesus christ thank you father for it 
in jesus precious name we have prayed speak to the day right now and make your declaration concerning the day you shall decree a thing it shall be established unto you make sure you are speaking boldly speaking confidently speaking wholeheartedly declaring what the day must deliver declaring what the day must deliver including making declaration about your engagement about what your engagement will deliver speak right now speak right now decree decree and declare it shall be delivered as you decree the day is productive the day is fruitful the day is bountiful in harvest in the name of jesus thank you mighty god in jesus precious name we have prayed as you have declared so shall it be in jesus precious name let's share the goodness of the lord together surely god's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives and we shall dwell in the house of the lord forever amen peace it's my year of breaking limits what eyes have not seen no ears heard shall be your experience all through the year 2020 congratulations amen and amen you are blessed